Hi, today I'm going to talk about the end-to-end -end design of the cloud security following the application architecture. Basically, I'm going to show you how you're going to secure the application layer by layer. Right, so over here, you have the user sending a request to the application that is sitting on the cloud via, for example, the HTTPS. Right, so now uh, the HTTPS, you know, it's by running on top of TRS, and the major version of the TRS right now is TRS 1.2 and 1.3 right so the main difference between TOS 1.2 and 1.3 is the TOS 1.3 is using the Deffy human by default and also turning out the perfect forward secrecy which means uh, that the man in the middle attack uh, could be mitigated very easily and um, so the first point uh, the request going to hit is the CDN right the CDN is the nearest location where uh, the website uh, it's going to store some static content, right? For example, uh, the web uh, images, right, and also the music files and etc., right. So, uh, apart from that, the CDN also perform certain levels of the security protection to the website. For example, the anti DDoS, right. So basically, the main uh, or mainstream uh, CDN platform like Akamai or like AWS CloudFront have the kind of capability. Basically, it supports a sort of a scrubbing center. So basically, it's sending a uh, dirty traffic or attack traffic. It will come up with a uh, clean traffic, right? So basically, this is how the CDN secure your website from the DDoS attack, right? The DDoS attack over here could be the application layer DDoS attack or network layer the volumetric DDoS attack. And apart from that, right? So if your CDN is intelligent enough, right, you can do some the HTTPS or TLS offload, which means that. As you know, the overhead of the TRS handshake uh, is uh, pretty like headache. So, uh, I mean, some of the CDN provider uh, gets you the feature that allows you to offload the TRS handshake. So, they exchange uh, every single uh, the TRS handshake with a token, right? So, from the second request on words, so instead of doing the TRS handshake again, we're right, going to just simply use a token, right? Made the request to uh, the rest of the nodes. And then, of course, we're going to uh, step further right into the next layer, which will be the WAF layer or the IDP layer. Right? So the WAF is also provided by the cloud providers, it's web application firewall, and also the IDP is, for example, the IPS intrusion protection system. So basically what it does is it protects you against those attacks that is listed from, for example, all WASP, a top 10, for example, SQL injection, uh, right, a Corsair script, etc. And uh, what IDP does is, it does the signature-based protection. Right? And then, you're going to cross the load balancer, which mm, doesn't do much about the security. Basically, it just do the load sharing right, across different application uh, gateways to different microservices. And then, you're going to hit the application, the API gateway. Right, so uh, the main API gateway of the mainstream cloud providers usually get you, for example, the AAA function, authentication, authorization, and accounting. Right, so the main use case is the first two, right? authentication and authorization, and also a filtering of those requests that is not legit. Given an example, so on the cloud you have the IAM, right? So basically, it does the access control, and uh, from the API gateway perspective you will leverage the IAM, basically uh, the IAM defines okay, whether this particular user is able to allow uh, uh, to, to, to get access to, for example, uh, the internal uh, server sources or, for example, the financial department resources, etc. Right. So based on that, I mean, the API gateway will allow and disallow certain users to access certain resources. And of course, that you can integrate with, uh, for example, the third-party uh, IDP providers by leveraging the OAuth 2 protocol, right? So for example, the Google, the Facebook, etc. So basically, you delegate the temporary access uh, to certain resources on uh, your own like Google account, for example, your contact list, right? Your photos, and etc. And of course, in terms of uh, the authentication, right? So you'll be leveraging all those kind of uh, components over here. For example, you want to make it stateful. It's a session based, right? You can use cookie. And uh, if you want to make it, for example, stateless, usually we'll be using token, for example, JWT, like JSON Web Token, and also 
sometimes once you get the token, you will exchange it with a secret, right? So for example, it could be the uh, the application SS uh, secret, right? And also you usually have a key store of your own. Mm, basically, uh, you want to like for example, uh, encrypt your own like, database, uh, right? You need a master key, right? So um, basically, this is all the components you want to leverage to secure your environment from the application perspective. And as I mentioned earlier, right? So uh, I mean the uh, um, the the typical uh, web ap uh, web architecture or the web communication is leveraging uh, both stateful and stateless the kind of a uh, communication, right? So, but now usually what we're we'll doing is having a combination of them, cause each of them uh, is I would say useful. However, each of them have a kind of a uh, uh, security disadvantages. For example, if just purely using cookie, uh, so um, you are vulnerable to CSRF, right? So basically, just a forgery, the kind of request uh, from uh, the tab of the same browser. Or if you're just simply using the JWT, right? JWT is stored on uh, the, te uh, the the permanent storage on your browser. So if the hacker uh, is leveraging, for example, the CrossFire script. Right, uh, to execute some of the like uh, script, right, to, 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 to get your JWT, so you'll get compromised. So that's why inside the HTTP uh, header, right, so there's a cookie uh, header, right, so usually we'll be storing the JWT inside the cookie header where there's an option could be turned on, which is to disable, right, the script, right, disable, for example, uh, the, uh, the any of the possibilities to get attacked by the CoSI script. So usually what we're going to do, the common practice is we're going to uh, make the application stateless by using JWT, JSON Web Token, right? And then we're going to store the JWT right, inside the cookie header, right? So uh, basically uh, to help you mitigate uh, the vulnerabilities of each, right? CSRF and also the cross script. And of course, I mean, just to ensure the integrity and also the, 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 the security of the JWT itself, you'll be using the signature to verify the JWT. And also, apart from um, the, the access token, the kind of a JWT, you're going to have another, for example, refresh JWT, for, just to make sure that the initial JWT, the token itself, has to be expired, for example, in 5 to 10 minutes, that kind of uh, time frame. And then, from the API gateway, we're going to hit the real application. So over here, the real application could be server-based or could be serverless. Server-based is just a traditional one, right? Leveraging the CPU and storage and also the uh, OS on top of it. For example, the Linux, the Windows, and etc. Right? And if it's serverless, I mean, it could be AWS Lambda, right? Etc. So from the server perspective, what we're going to do is the hardening. And if possible, if budget allows, right, please install antivirus. And then, right, so you develop the application. So from the DevOps perspective, now we're not just doing a pure DevOps, right? We, we're doing the DevSecOps. And based on that, we're going to embed uh, the flows for the vulnerability assessment, the penetration test, right, all along the DevSec flows, uh, DevSecOps flows. So basically, we're going to do the code scan. And also nowadays, they we're going to like store the code, the, the artifact on the cloud repo. So we're going to make sure the security of the repo. And um, for example, that you're going to uh, launch a Docker image and then run into a container. So you have to make sure your own Docker image itself is secure, right? It's not injected with uh, like malicious code. And then from the app or the microservice itself, we're going to hit the DB via the cache. There's nothing much that you can do with the cache, for example, the Redis, the main cache from the security perspective, right? However, from the DB perspective, it's considered uh, data at rest, right? So uh, comparing with data at rest is data in motion, which I was talking about earlier. So now re regarding the data at rest, what we're gonna do is we're going to encrypt uh, the data at rest, right? So if it's not natively encrypted, like what Google does right now, or GCP does right now, um, basically you're given an option right, to encrypt all kinds of the data, but uh, it will somehow I mean, affect the performance of the particular database or data store. Last but not least, 
uh, is about the centralized logging, right? It's a big data analytics that based uh, the ba uh, based uh, the behavior monitoring. Right? So basically, what it does is it will does some kind of uh, like baselining of the environment. So if anything that is uh, suspicious, uh, um, then it will alert you. And also, I mean, you have to make sure the compliance is there. Uh, PCI DSS, if you're using, like, if, if you're running an uh, e-commerce website, right? And also you have to make sure that your configuration is all following the compliance requirement from time to time. So this is an overview from the architectural perspective. Pretty abstract, right? So the next one, we're going to give you a real life example based on the AWS. How we're going to pick a select of the AWS components to secure each of the components. So the user access, the user request is still the same. Follow the HTTPS, TRS 1.2, TRS 1.3, and then for the CDN that you're given the option to use the AWS CloudFront, right? And uh, WAF, right, you can use like AWS uh, Cloud Shield, right, and also the AWS WAF. So basically, it does like some sort of anti DDoS protection, right? Antivirus, anti malware, etc. And from the IAM perspective, right, given the option of the IAM, right? Basically, it's AWS IAM, and also we have a lot of like key management or the token management or the secret management server. So basically, instead of uh, having your own like key server, right? So you just leverage on the cloud native one from AWS. And over here, I mean, you can integrate. Uh, the authorization and authentication with external like IDPs, identity providers, like I mentioned earlier, the OS2 uh, and the Open ID Connect that is running on top of OS2, right? So there's a, a deep dive of uh, what Open ID Connect is and OS2 is and the relationship between them. Uh, in another video, you can see the link from here, right? And also you can like fall back to your SAML, right? SAML 2.0. So this is kind of a conventional way of doing the integration, but a lot of other enterprises are still using that, right? So this is more suitable for the enterprise internal use. Uh, and the, the OS2 is more for like public users to access the, the website, to gain the temporary access to the resources and the leveraging the open ID connect for the authentication, right? So from the DevSecOps perspective, of course, you have the list of the tools that can be used. It could be a third-party one where right, it's embedded into that AWS uh, like code pipeline, the kind of flow definition tool, right? So, uh, and also you have a third-party like tools like vulnerability assessment and also penetration test to, uh, to, to, to be run uh, in every stage of the, the application development. And from the monitoring, the login perspective, and also the configuration compliance perspective, you have AWS config, you have the uh, CloudWatch. So basically, you uh, every single action is generating logs, and all the logs will be streamed to the CloudWatch, and also the CloudTrail is the sort of an auditing tool. And last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, for the data arrest, you're given an option to secure it using your own master key, right? So basically, that concludes uh, the 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 the. That the cloud security design based on the AWS components. Hope it's helpful. Thank you very much.